faith, La ilaha illallah, which I'm sure you have heard many times in the course of today's many lectures, there is no deity that is worthy of our worship other than Allah. This is the crux of our belief. This is the, 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 the fundamental pillar upon which all other pillars revolve around. If this pillar is not met, even if it is not met by contradicting it via our Prophet Muhammad, it doesn't matter how you contradict it. If you direct an act of worship to other than God, if you pray, you prostrate, you sacrifice, you invoke, you have a relationship with any being, that is an exclusive right of God's, then you have contradicted that testimony of faith. There is no object, no being, no substance, that is worthy of our worship, our veneration, our love, our fear, our hope, other than the one who created me. Including the prophets of God, including the angels. So this is the crux of our religion, and this is why Muslims say, yes, we are the only monotheistic religion, because our definition of monotheism is more than just the dictionary definition of monotheism. So the purpose of life is indeed the worship of God. Now, what does it mean to worship God? Here too, the Muslims have a different definition of worship. When I say the word worship, I bet you the first picture you have in mind is what? Who can tell me? The first picture you have in mind when I say worship? Pray, prostrate, bow down to. No doubt, that is worship. Nobody's denying that. But in Islam, the concept of worship is broader than that. Yes, prayer is a very important type of worship. No doubt. In fact, in one, in one prophetic narration, he said, Prayer is the gist or the essence of worship. The one whom you pray to, you invoke. When I say pray here, I mean call out to for your needs. Okay, you're invoking. This is the essence of worship because no single act better illustrates the relationship between the worshipper and the object of his worship than prayer. Because you pray to the being whom you love and loves you. You pray to the being whom you know has the power to give you what you want. You pray to the being whom you know cherishes you. You pray to the being who you know hears you, sees you, knows you, cares about you. Therefore, the one whom you pray to, that is the one whom you have made a God. That is your God. So no doubt, you're right, prayer is the gist of worship, even in Islam. But it is not the only manifestation of worship. Worship is far broader. It encompasses many, many, many facets of our life. So much so, that smiling in the face of a person whom you greet is an act of worship. Helping your brother, in one, in one narration the Prophet said, when you take water from the well, this is the most common chore that people would do, right? In our times it's a very heavy chore, nobody does it. If anybody had to do it, it would be a very difficult chore. You go to the well and you pull water out. That is not something we want to do. In those days, they'd have to do that 20, 30, 40 times a day. He said to pull water from that well, and then to pour your bucket into your brother's bucket. You give him that water. This is an act of worship as well. To remove an act, uh, to remove uh, some, some substance that's irritating people. To remove, basically to, to clean the road. To, to remove that litter from the road is an act of worship, an act of charity. So you see, the concept of worship is also different in Islam. Being good to human beings is one of the best acts of worship. And here is where the Islamic definition of worship is again radically different than any other, uh, than many other, not all, some other religions say, but many other religions. And that, for the Muslim, there are acts of worship that are due to God, such as prayer, fasting, sacrifice, and that is the most important. And then there are acts of worship that you can do for the sake of God, but yes, your fellow men are involved. Primary amongst them is to be good to your parents. This is the highest level of servitude that you show to any human being. No human being has the level that your parents do in Islam. And then obviously to your, to your spouse, your children, your brothers and sisters, you know, fellow men. And then there is also acts of worship that you do for yourself. You take care of your body even. And that is an act of worship. There are three, if you like, spheres of worship. Between you and God, with your fellow man, and with yourself. And in Islam you have to perfect all three. If a person were to perfect only one of these three, they're falling short. And this is where we would disagree with many humanists secular or religious, who claim the purpose of creation is to be good to man. No, this is not the ultimate purpose of creation. The ultimate pur purpose of creation is to worship God. And worshiping God, one of the manifestations of that worship is to be good to your fellow men. Yes, but to restrict this to, the, to, to, to being good to men, you are neglecting the rights of God. If somebody were to show you a favor, and instead of repaying him back, you repay somebody else back, 
That's not very nice. The one who has created you, the one who has given you all that you have, to reject him, to neglect him, to not care about him, it doesn't matter if you do other acts of good. They will be rewarded, nobody's saying they won't be. But you have forfeited his pleasure by ignoring and, neg and neglecting him. So the greatest act of worship, no doubt, is the worship of God himself. Then after that, a part of worship is to help your fellow men. And in this regard, any act of charity, any act of good that brings about good to mankind is an act of worship. In one prophetic tradition, the Prophet is reported to have said, the best of people are those who benefit the people the most. The best of people are those who benefit the people most. Meaning, once you do believe in God and you are a righteous person in your daily life, if you want to excel over others, you need to be good to your fellow men. So, the, the concept of, of monotheism is different in Islam, and the concept also of worship it is also different. One more aspect, and that is that, and then we'll open the floor for, for Q&A uh, and for a discussion, and that is, one thing about Islam that many people simply um, don't understand is that we also believe one manifestation of worship is to submit to the laws of God. We believe that Islam is not just dry theology, not just cut and paste, believe in this, believe in that, believe in this, believe in that, no. We believe that the one who created us is the only one who can really and truly tell us how to live our lives. Nobody, nobody is better qualified to tell us what to do and what not to do, what to eat and what not to eat, how to marry and divorce, how to leave our inheritance, how to live our national, international lives than God. And this is where the concept of, uh, of separating the church and state, for example, the Muslims, uh, as I'm sure by now all of you know, the Muslims believe that our lives are governed by God. There is no separation in that sense, that I, I live my life according to the laws of God. I render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, I render unto God what is God's, but there should be no contradiction between the two. They have to go hand in hand, because Caesar is but a servant of God. And so when the commandment of Caesar goes against the commandment of my God, that is where obviously issues arise. I have to live my life according to the laws of God. Now, one manifestation of worship, as we said, is to submit to those laws. Therefore, for the Muslim, a Muslim believes that a true religion has to not just be cut and dry theology, but also it has to be a system of governance, a system of ethics, of morality. The one who tells us who he is must also tell us what is moral and immoral, what is ethical and what is unethical. And in fact, it is a logical consequence of a God being a God. Nobody is more, when I say buddy here, I mean no, nobody meaning no being. Perhaps, perhaps not the wisest thing to use when you're referring to God, but no being is more qualified to dictate to us how to live our lives. Man cannot even judge himself. And we all see for ourselves what happens when the majority quote-unquote uh, doctrines rule. Many of you who are practicing Christians, you all know what happens when, for example, with, with abortion, with other issues that we all feel very strongly about. Even men are not qualified to judge themselves because the people who become in charge, as we all know very well, that power gets to them. And they start abusing and misusing that power. It's just only natural. And that is why in Islam, the concept of a government, it's a very different concept. The laws are already up and running. The laws are already there. The laws have been revealed. It's a very different system of government. Because the government is not there to take power for itself. The government is there to make sure that the laws that are already there are implemented. And that is where a radical difference occurs as well. Now of course, this leads us to the issue of uh, Muslim minorities living in, in uh, uh, land such as America, that is a separate topic and I just gave a talk recently, I'll be giving a talk again tonight where, where I say in, in all honesty that yes we are a minority in this country therefore these views have to remain theoretical we must respect the law of the land we have to understand that our rights here are uh, our rights as citizens we're not ex expecting to implement our laws internationally or nationally but within the realm of my personal life the constitution guarantees the freedom for me to be religious in my personal life and that is what we want to do. And that's something we're talking about on a, on a, a pragmatic or a, uh, a civic level if you like. But I'm talking about the theoretical level. Theoretically, a religion should provide not just theology, but also ethics and morality and an entire legal frame of mind. All of that comes part and parcel with the concepts of monotheism and the concepts of worship.